Ghana's current population, according to the World Population Review, is estimated at 30,462,306, with a growth rate of 2.2%, and with agriculture providing over 90% of the food needs of the country. Unfortunately, one major setback the country has had to grapple with is the issue of food insecurity and it looks like there's no hope but wait hope is here in april 2017 the president of ghana whilst inaugurating the government's flagship program on agriculture planting for food and jobs emphasized that the government's vision would be hinged on modernizing agriculture improving production efficiency, achieving food security and profitability for farmers. The Crop Research Institute, a public research institute under the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research, operates with a mission to develop and disseminate demand-driven technologies and build capacity for sustainable food and industrial crop productivity to enhance livelihoods. Our vision is to become center of excellence for agricultural research, innovation, and capacity building for development. And as an institute, our mandate is to develop and disseminate demand-driven technologies and capacity building for sustainable food and industrial crops productivity to enhance Livelihood. The Institute has introduced various technologies and interventions that contribute to the implementation of key government policies and programs. Talking about the contribution of the CSR Crop Research Institute towards government policy, we want to highlight on the role the Crop Research Institute has played on the planting for food and jobs. We are responsible for the production of uh, basic seeds. And these basic seeds comprise of the uh, foundation and then the feeder seeds. We develop these materials, uh, multiply them, and then uh, give it to certified seed growers. And then the certified seed growers in turn multiply them and then package it in smaller quantities and then sell it to ordinary farmers. By way of achievement, over the years we've been able to produce about more than 10 tons of uh, foundation seeds of maize, about uh, 21 kilograms of seed of pepper, and then about 4 to 5 tons of soybean. And then as for cassava, maybe more than 3 to 4 million cuttings. And we've distributed this, all these materials to the various certified seed growers who have multiplied them and have given it out to farmers. They have planted it across the whole country. Now, everybody is saying that food is in abundance. We have a lot of maize available. We have a lot of rice being produced. All this started from here. And then the contributions we have made have impacted positively on the planting for food and jobs because the farmers are having access to seeds, good quality seeds that we have developed through our breeding process and we made them available to the government to be used and we are all witnesses to the successes that have been achieved. The selected technological interventions are supply of high yielding and disease and drought tolerant planting materials to support the planting for food and jobs, release of pro-vitamin A maize varieties to help reduce vitamin A deficiencies. He adds that the Crops Research Institute has trained certified seed growers and farmers to develop their capacities in the production of high-quality certified seeds that have enabled them to increase their outputs to meet national requirements. We supply to various seed companies across Ghana, some in the Ashanti region, some in the Volta region, some in the Brafo region. Some of the partner companies we dealt with include, we have the, the seed pack in general, so we have the branch in the country, we have a branch in Brafo, and then we have MMB, we supply the foundation seed to MMB. We have BMC Cooperative, we have uh, Abbe Bio Farms, which is based in Guahafo, and then there are several others. Dr. Opon further stressed 
that the CRI has also produced and disseminated production guides for the various crops to educate the public on good agronomic and post-harvest practices in the country. We don't pay them. When we give the seeds to them, we build their capacities. So we call them in house training, we teach them the basic techniques to produce quality, both hybrid and OPV varieties for all the crops. Probably for Musa Boyen, Musa Boyen Palmer, the Jumadino, a two corner. Once the logistics are available, we are able to expand our farms and produce more and employ more people. So with the plan the food and job program that the government brought, it's a very good initiative and you should all support the government and applaud me for bringing such a laudable initiative. This also enable them to make economic returns out of their production activities. Say they move any gym be play, chance. We will say, can I say they need to see a jumano? A jumana, we do cook jumukrana. We do beto, we do be jiska, we do not be co. We say there be a after surprise to come with my ano. Na enye by through some program we know to amai niji kesi abaya city. See this as a success story that the contribution that the CSR Crop Research Institute has made to impact positively on the government's policy of hunting for food and jobs. In addition to the uh, one district oil factory, because it is this same materials that the that the one district one factory are going to use for the agro processing and then turn them into uh, industrial products for export and for local consumption. The government imports yellow maize into the country annually. About 50,000 tons of yellow maize is imported into the country. This transcribes to an amount of about $8 million annually being spent on the importation of yellow maize. Now with the coming in of these new varieties of yellow and orange maize that the CSIR Crop Research Institute developed. I'm sure very soon the quotation of yellow maize will be a thing of the past. Because with the intervention of the government in trying to help produce a lot of seed through the planting of food and jobs, we've been able to produce a lot of basic seeds that are available for farmers to use. Dr. Manfred Ewo, senior research scientist and maize breeder, highlights the advantages of vitamin A maize over the traditional white maize. Uh, this is basically the pro-vitamin A maize program. Vitamin A is very, very important for uh, our human development especially in pregnant women and children. Vitamin A is very useful for the eye, it's very good for improvement of skin, it's really very good for metabolic processes, uh, for example, even development of the fetus of uh, the babies in the womb of our mothers. So far, we've been able to develop varieties like Monampa and Huazin crops before. CRI and Huafe, we have developed all these varieties that are available for use. These contain high levels of uh, vitamin A. Vitamin A enhanced varieties are being introduced among farmers in Ghana. This is to help reduce vitamin A deficiencies that could lead to serious health implications, especially in rural communities. Now, if there is lack of vitamin A in your diet, what you normally experience is that you have problems with the eye, problems with diseases, especially in children. You see that these children become malnourished and they succumb to a lot of diseases. So, a feasible way 
to solve this by with A deficiency is to develop plans that will uh, give us long-term solutions to this like with A deficiency. And since maize is a stable food in Ghana and is eaten in various dishes, we use it for banku, TZ, we use it for uh, uh, apple, you use it for kenke, several dishes, cocoa, especially when we are winning these children, we feed them cocoa. If we want to solve this by the aid efficiency, uh, we make sure that the uh, maize that we use in the Preparing these dishes contains a lot of vitamin A, in high levels that will be available to the body when it is ingested. Looking at its high nutritional value, the vitamin A enhanced maize could be adopted for the school feeding program. Now, the vitamin A is very, very important in terms of school feeding program. These children, when uh, they are preparing the bamboo, uh, you can use this vitamin A maize, which is locally bred here, to prepare this bamboo and other food dishes for them, so that it will help improve their health status. In maintaining good yield and crop protection, CRI has developed a mechanism that can fight pests. This technology is the push-pull mechanism. We are on the push-pull fraud. This demonstration fraud is to show how we can manage poor army worm infestation using a non-pesticide approach. That is a biological method to manage poor army worm infestation. So here we have maize on the fraud. Then uh, in between the maize plants, we have desmodium, which is also a legume that is planted in between the maize and then we have uh, outside the plot, we have a napier grass or elephant grass. So there are three components here. What this push-pull technology seeks to do is to manage four armyworm infestation. With the outbreak of four armyworm in 2017, all the initial strategies to manage the worm was through the use of a pesticide, that is a use of insecticide. And then we found out that insecticide, if you are to rely on insecticide to control the pest, it has a lot of environmental effects. So what we are doing here is to explore an approach that does not include the use of insecticide. So it is a non-pesticide approach to manage for armyworm infestation. And the technology is called push-pull, originally developed to fight stem borers, but now have been adapted to manage for armyworm infestation. So we set up this component put the maize inside, you can see from this maize leaf, although the maize is almost matured, you see there is no damage. There is no damage done to the leaf of the, of the plant. Look at all this, there is no damage to the leaf. There is no infestation. And we didn't use any insecticide here. What it means is that the stem was able to manage for armyworm infestation. Now, how does it work? We have the legume here, which is called desmodium. And that legume called desmodium acts as a, a push. When the army worm comes here, this desmodium will push it, whilst the elephant grass, which is at the border of the, the fold, attracts the worm. So the worm rather leaves the fold here, and they go and sit on top of the elephant grass, therefore leaving the maize leaves free. So you can see the, the, the leaves are very clean, there is no damage, there is no infestation. And when we are able to do this, I think the technology has worked very well in managing for army worm. When we are able to do this, we have our maize crops or we have increased yield, which will help the nation in achieving food security. Because maize is a food security. Dr. Patricia Otain Dakon, another research scientist and soil and water engineer at the Institute, further elucidated on the benefits of the push-pull system. We are two in the push-pull system and this system has a lot of other benefits I would like to talk about. One of the benefits is in regard to 
climate change adaptation. Why we are saying this is a climate smart technology is the fact that it can conserve soil moisture. The system has three components. We have the desmodium, we have our maize, and we have the napier. So in effect, it is giving us a microclimate here. What the desmodium is doing is covering up the soil surface, thereby reducing evaporation from the soil surface. What it would in turn do is to conserve the moisture that we have for the maize to be able to use in growing. There are instances where we have some intervals or intermittent droughts within the rainy seasons. So if we have a system like this, we are going to conserve moisture and then this uh, maize plant is going to grow very well. Again, the, the smodium is also a legume which is also uh, nitrogen fixing. So as it is growing, it is also fixing nitrogen into the soil for the maize to also use. Another system that we have, which is very important, especially to our farmers in the northern parts of the country, is the fact that the desmodium and the napier grass are also fodder. It can be cut or pruned and used as animal feed. The first strategy was to validate if it will be able to manage for army web. And that one is now confirmed. The system has been able to manage the infestation very well. Now, we have, now the next strategy is to talk about upscaling. How do we upscale this strategy to farmers? Because farmers will also be planting in larger areas. So how would they integrate the technology on a larger plot? What we are saying is that if we have a plot, maybe two acre fold, what we have seen here is that if we put the, uh, this push pool by 50 meters, because there is change in the agroecology, it is able to influence infestation even on non-pesticide uh, plots. The benefits we are seeing with this technology is numerous. Therefore, I am recommending that farmers adopt or embrace this technology to improve maize production in the country. Indeed, the agricultural sector of Ghana has witnessed massive developments through the initiatives of the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research's Crops Research Institute. And these initiatives are going to further enhance the government's flagship agricultural program, Planting for Food and Jobs.